Hello world, boyfriend here, and for those of you keeping score at home, this is take one of the pickup video, so let's hope that that's all the takes I'm gonna need. Where to begin? Uh, I think this is gonna be a pretty fun pickup video, a lot of stuff. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight different systems. We got a whole bunch of Nintendo Power magazines and plenty more surprises coming your way. So stay tuned, audience. No, uh, let, oh, you know, this I meant to show last pickup video, uh, but after all the technical issues I was faced with, I just completely forgot to show it. Um, I got Earthworm Jim, the television series, on DVD. One of the things I've been trying to do is, I hope you guys can see that, uh, one of the things I've been trying to do is go back and revisit a lot of my favorite cartoons that I watched growing up, specifically the more obscure ones. Um, you know, I've watched all the Batmans and Animaniacs and all those popular shows, but I'm trying to revisit the more obscure ones. And I started with Earthworm Jim. Uh, and boy, this show holds up well. There's only like, I wanna say 23 episodes in the whole series. But if you didn't know, uh, the same guy that does the voice for Homer, I'm gonna butcher his name, it's Dan Castanelena or something like that. He does the voice of Earthworm Jim, um, among many other famous voiceover artists uh, are featured in the show, but it's a really great show. I highly recommend it, and I thought that'd be a fun thing to show in a pickup video, kind of relates to video games, right? Based on a video game. You know, speaking of television shows, uh, based on video games, I would say the ratio of quality television shows based on video games versus movies based on video games is like two, two ends of the spectrum. I would say television definitely got the better of the two because you think of all the TV shows based on video games, they've always been fairly well received, at least anything that's popping in my head right now, but movies based on video games almost always fail. So, interesting, huh? Yeah, just thought of that. So, where to begin with everything else? Uh, why don't we start off with this? So, PlayStation, a few pickup videos a while back, I started getting back into PlayStation collecting. Now, I'm not a huge disc-based collector uh, in general, but PlayStation was very near and dear to my heart growing up, and I've just been wanting to revisit some games of uh, my younger days. And the first being Resident Evil. Now, this is the director's cut, which, as far as I understand, isn't much different than the actual cut. Uh, I don't want to say theatrical cut, because that's not what it would be. Um, but yeah, the director's cut, I, I, I can't even really tell you what's different. Maybe blood or something, but uh, it's got a demo for Resident Evil 2. And I just love the Resident Evil series. One of my favorite series of all time. Probably that and Mega Man. I'm a Capcom fan fanboy. Hands down. They're my, my favorite um, developer, publisher, all that crap. But anyway, Resident Evil. Uh, and then the other PlayStation game I got was Dino Crisis 2. Now anybody who's played the Dino Crisis series knows this is a lot like Resident Evil, uh, except instead of zombies, you're fighting dinosaurs. And the action is much more fast-paced. I mean, you just don't get to stop. And I love Dino Crisis 2. This was one of the few games that I would try and speedrun through it. You know, uh, like Resident Evil, I like to take my time and go and explore every little nook and cranny. But Dino Crisis, I was all about getting through as fast as I could. And this game holds up so well. Uh, I just played through the entire thing, beat it, and I love it. I love it. It's got so many extra goodies, too. A lot of replay value in this game, so that's all I have to say about that. That's all I had for PlayStation. Um, let's go new, new stuff. This is the latest game I've added, or the, most recently. I got this yesterday, and that is Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D. Now, this is a port of the Wii game. Uh, to the 3DS, and I love this game. I love the Donkey Kong franchise. I love platformers, and this game is fantastic on the 3DS. It's good to just pick up and play and put down. Uh, it's got an awesome autosave feature. Every time you 
beat a level, it auto saves, so you don't have to worry about getting to a save point. That's great. Oh man, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. That's it's those little touches like that. But uh, this game was great on the Wii. I haven't played it since it first came out, so it's kind of almost like playing it for the first time again. I I, I kind of forgot a lot about the game, and I'm I'm just having a I'm having a blast with it again. So there's that. Um, got a NES game. This one now. Here's the thing. I am when it comes to collecting, I'm going for a complete set of Super Nintendo. I'm going for a complete set of Nintendo Powers, but that's pretty much it. I'm not a completionist by any means, except for those two things. So, uh, like with Sega Genesis, I don't have a lot of games. I think I have like maybe 20, and that might even be too many. Uh, and same for NES. I only get the games I really want to play, and this is one of those games that I really wanted to play. Um, I actually never owned this. This is the first time I've, I'm ever owning this in my life. And I think a lot of you are going to be like, what? But, Contra. Yeah, the original, the classic. Now, this was a game I never played growing up. None of my friends had it, miraculously. And I discovered it very late in life. I always knew of its popularity, but I never played it myself. And I freaking love this game. I was really trying to get good at, uh, uh, recently I've been playing this game a lot, I've been trying to beat the game without using the Konami code. I think that's any fan of Contra's ultimate goal, is to be able to beat it without using the Konami code, right? Well, I tell you, there's eight levels. I can get to level six, the energy zone, before I really start having trouble. Um, I don't know why the energy zone, it's the stupid freaking like fires or lasers, whatever you want to call them, coming down from the ceiling and the wall and stuff. I just, they always freaking get me. And I know that if I got past that level, I could probably beat the game because the level after it, the, uh, I don't even know what that's, the hangar, that one's not too hard. And the alien layer isn't too hard if you know what to do, but the freaking energy zone, I tell you what. Anyway, Contra, very happy to have that in the collection. Uh, Game Boy, got a couple Game Boy games, and actually, so, so, uh, Game Boy I would say is the other big collection I'm going for, or at least where I want a lot of games. I love Game Boy games, they're so great if you know what to look for. There's a lot of crap out there, don't get me wrong, but if you know the right games to look for, there is so many little gems and treasures on the Game Boy. Um, but not just the Game Boy, I actually got a Game Boy Color game, which I rarely get. I own two Game Boy Color games, well now I own three. But I own two, and you know what those two were? This is, I'm sad to admit this. Mission Impossible and Tomb Raider, which neither game is very good, uh, but those were the only Game Boy Color games I ever owned. Well, now I have a third one, and that is Mega Man Extreme 2. Now, this is a game I didn't even know. I've been, I've been recently getting into Game Boy Mega Man games. Um, I have all the original Game Boy games, all the, the Mega Man 1 through 5. I got all the Mega Man Zeros. Uh, I have uh, Mega Man ZX, ZX Advent, as far as handheld games. But I never knew, uh, I, I thought this Mega Man Extreme, I thought it was like Battle Network, right? Where it's like a more of an RPG. I didn't realize Mega Man Extreme is kind of like the Game Boy ones, except it takes the X games and mishmashes them into its own little unique game. So Mega Man Extreme 2 is kind of a mishmash of Mega Man X, Mega Man X2, and Mega Man X3 with some new elements added as far as bosses and levels and stuff. I love it, it's so fun. I went through the game, I beat it. If you follow Girlfriend Versus on Instagram, you'll know that, because anytime I beat a game, I, I post a little pic uh, from it. And I cannot recommend this enough. If you like uh, Mega Man X games, Get this, it's super fun. The only thing, the only problem I have is Game Boy Color is so hard to play uh, unless you have a, well, let's see, I guess if you have an SP that works. I was playing it on the GameCube Game Boy Player, but a lot of, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. I just wish you could play Game Boy Color games on the Super Game Boy because the Super Nintendo controller is so much better for Game Boy games than the GameCube controller. Not very uh, conducive to playing a Mega Man game especially. And then the other game, I got, and really this would be a creme de la creme game, to be honest. Uh, so I'm showing it in the middle of the video instead of saving it for last, but that is Kid Dracula. Now, anybody who knows anything about Game Boy games and rarity, this is a very rare game for the uh, Game Boy. Uh, hard to find. It's actually 
uh, in it's a Castlevania game, surprisingly, uh, kind of a spoof of Castlevania games, really. Um, but it plays a lot like Castlevania. You're this little kid Dracula, as the title would imply, and it's pretty fun. I haven't delved into it that much, but uh, I have I have enjoyed what I've played so far. <sighs> Boy, I feel like I'm just waxing poetic today. Let's get, let's get, let's crank this up a little faster. Let's do some Nintendo Powers. Now, I want to shout out uh, a good buddy of mine. He's another YouTuber, Retro Nonsense. If you haven't heard of this guy, check out his channel. I'll put probably links down below as well as in the video, maybe here, 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 somewhere with the annotations. But Retro Nonsense is a fantastic channel. It's this guy. He, basically, they're the the Fantastic Four of the YouTube gaming community. They're the first family of the YouTube gaming community, as, at least in my opinion. I don't know of any other family, but it's this guy, he's got his, his wife, his kids are all in the videos. They make great uh, videos together. Um, just, you can see their love and nostalgia shining through so much. It's just intoxicating watching them. It's addicting, it's, it's hypnotizing watching these, this family uh, who, who everyone's in the games uh, just go on and on. I could watch them for hours and hours. Um, I hope that sold you on them because I really want you guys to check them out. But anyway, he knew uh, Duke, who's the leader of the retro nonsense family, the father, he uh, knew I, I collected Nintendo Powers, and he got a great deal on some Nintendo Powers, and he sent them to me. He sent me a bunch, in fact. I have my Skechers USA box back with me, so let's, uh, let's dive in and see what I got. These are in no particular order, I don't think, um, but they're all later issues. They're all in like the 200s, uh, which I don't have any of yet, so I, thank you, Duke, so much. This is awesome. Check out his channel, Retro Nonsense. Let's look at some Nintendo powers. First up, we got uh, 225 with Sonic RPG. What? I don't know. I don't know what this game is. I'm. It's too new. It's too new for me. I don't know what it is. Uh, 224, Ninja Gaiden something on the front. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, and a lot of these are from uh, Monty Montasser. So Monty Montasser, wherever you are out there in the world, thank you for putting your Nintendo powers in my collection, even though it was indirectly. Uh, 221 with Final Fantasy 12. Yeah, I don't know any of these games. Oh, I know this game. Uh, 227, Mario Kart Wii. Um, oh, and just for the record, all these are pretty much complete. If they got posters and stuff in them, they're there, so that's, all, that's always a plus. 229 with I want to say probably Guitar Hero Aerosmith. Uh, 215 with some sort of Pokemon on the cover. I don't know, maybe Girlfriend knows. I sure don't. Uh, 216 with Knights. I know Knights. Journey into Dreams. Uh, 211 with some Zelda game. Maybe that's got to be Twilight Princess on the cover. Uh, another Sonic one, 213. Couldn't tell you which Sonic. Maybe it says. Does it say? Yeah, I don't care. New Sonic games suck, right? Oh my gosh, am I going to get flamed for that? Uh, 205, another Zelda. This looks like Minish Cap or, oh no, maybe Wind Waker. No, Phantom Hourglass. I love that style. I love that, that, uh, art style for Zelda. The, the, like, tune, tune link. I dig it. Another Pokemon. 209. And that looks, ugh, I don't know. Uh, another Zelda Twilight Princess, 193. Hope you guys can see this without glare. It's hard because it's a lot of natural lighting in here. Take my word for it if you can't see it. Uh, 230 with one of the Castlevanias on it. Man, there's so many of these. Uh, 214 with the Sims on the Wii. Of course, it's Nintendo Power. It's not like it's gonna be on Xbox or PlayStation. Uh, 228, Final Fantasy IV for the DS. I actually have that game. Uh, 207. This one's kind of banged up, but that's okay. Uh, this is that Bunny's Ra Raving Rabbids. I, I, I don't know. Rayman something? Whatever. Uh, <laughs> I don't even... What's this? 
It's ripped off. Okay. Tales of Symphonia. Am I saying that right? I don't know what number it is because it's ripped off on the, on the spine. Oh man, I got an itch on my nose. Oh, I just gotta get it. Oh, that was so good. It's been bugging me, it's been bugging me. Anyway, uh, 208 Final Fantasy 3 on the DS. I actually also have this game and I beat it. I think that's the only Final Fantasy game I've ever beaten completely. Uh, 223 and this is No More Heroes, right? Is that the game? I think so. Uh, oh, running out of space. Uh, Smash Brothers Brawl, 222. Uh, Resident Evil 4, maybe? 5? Oh, Umbrella Chronicles, 217. Um, Super Mario Galaxy, 220. Uh, almost there. Uh, 210, and that's just kind of a Wii, Wii special. Uh, oh, not that one. And then uh, finally, 212, and that's with one of the Wario games, WarioWare, maybe Smooth Moves for the Wii. Um, and then, of course, I always shout out my friends over at Retro Video Game Magazine. Uh, I'll put a link for these guys. Fantastic uh, current magazine. This is actually the first issue of what would be the second year. Um, and they actually have a spine now. It used to just be the staples down the side, but this actually has a full-on spine. So well done, Retro Video Game Magazine. If you couldn't tell, the theme uh, or genre that is uh, given the spotlight in this issue is fighting games. Obviously with the release of Mortal Kombat 10 or X or whatever you want to call it. Uh, that being the spotlight on this one. And it's great. Great issue. Great magazine. Check it out. I did get... Oh yeah. This also came in Duke's little bundle, and I've never seen one of these before. It's called Game Player's Strategy Guide to Nintendo Games. Now this is a great, very similar to Nintendo Power type magazine, like a tips and tricks or something, but I've never seen this before, and this one is great. It's got Final Fantasy II, uh, Little Mermaid, Dragon Warrior III, uh, really fun. Um, and that is the all of the ones that Duke sent me, with the exception of Retro Video Game Magazine. So thank you, Duke. Thank you, Retro Nonsense. Uh, I love your guys' channel. Everyone should check them out. Rock on with your bad self. I did get a few other Nintendo Powers of the 100, 1 to 100 numbers that I'm going for. <laughs> and the first is Volume 65 with Illusion of Gaia. Uh, 46 with Tiny Toon Adventures Buster Bust Loose. Who'd this come from? This came from John Lynch. John Lynch, thank you very much. And then this one, this is great. Keith Swearingen. Keith Swearingen. Are you related to Al Swearingen from Deadwood? How cool would that be? Anyway, thank you, Keith Swearingen. Uh, and this is number 37 with Lemmings on the cover. And then another one of those game over like, uh, I don't even remember which, I gotta open this to see what one it is because I don't remember what volume this is. This was so long ago that I got it. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Oh, I think this is 67 with Earthworm Jim on the cover. Who doesn't love Earthworm Jim? Hey, speaking of, Earthworm Jim, the soil he did crawl. Earthworm Jim, a super suit did fall. Jim was just a dirt-eating, chewy length of worm flesh, but that all came to a crashing end. Earthworm Jim. Uh, okay, what to next? Let's do some Super Nintendo games. I'm gonna check if this is still recording, because dang it. Oh, we are in luck. 20 minutes, I better get, get a move on. So, some Super Nintendo games. Uh, not as many as last time, only six, but Making my way, making my way through that library. First up is Michael Jordan, Chaos in the Windy City. Uh, this is a fun, I guess you would call it platform type game with Michael Jordan. I'll be honest, all of these games right here, I haven't play tested any of them. I don't know if they work. I don't even know what some of these games are. So I'm, I apologize, I've just been so busy lately. I haven't had a chance to play uh, any of these games. Uh, Michael Jordan, Chaos in the Windy City. Awesome game though. Uh, Here's a perfect example. Young Merlin. I have no idea what this game is. You tell me, interwebs. Can't imagine it's too 
Uh, amazing, though. It was like six bucks. Uh, True Lies. Love this movie, and I love movie tie-in games. I actually can't wait to play this. I'm sure it's crap. It's LJN, but uh, I love movie tie-in games, especially when I'm fond of the movie. Uh, here's a Capcom game. Super Buster Brothers. Uh, I think this is kind of an uncommon game. Not, not too hard to find. Not too easy to find, right? That would be the definition of uncommon. And then, oh, my mortal enemy, Koei, with uncharted waters. Now, I have to say, last video, I, or last pickup video, I crapped all over the, the company Koei, and I'm not uncrapping. I'm still crapping on them, but I think I maybe miss said, miss said? Excuse me, misspoke with what they, what kind of games they were. I guess they're not so much real-time strategy games as they are simulation games. Is that right? I guess that might be more apt. Maybe they are strategy games. They're like strategy simulation games. Let's put them all under that umbrella. But anyway, Uncharted Waters is just like that. I guarantee I will not put any time to that. And then finally, uh, this would be the best Super Nintendo game I have of this little lot. But uh, it brings up an interesting point, and that is Lufia 2 Rise of the Sinistrals? Sinistro? I don't know. My point is, this is a screwed up uh, label. It's got NG written on the back and permanent marker. I typically do not get games when they're this banged up. Uh, the reason being, I'll just, I'll, I'll wait and get a better label, right? Well, the thing is with Lufia 2, this is a hard to find game, hard to come across, and it's only going up in price, as is all of the, all these Super Nintendos lately. So my question for you guys is, what do you think when you run across uncommon or even rare games that are really banged up? Do you spring for them? Do you get them? My thought is, one day I'll, I'll hopefully be able to get a label upgrade, but I don't want to miss out on the chance of getting Lufia 2 now uh, for the price I did, because it was pretty cheap. Um, and and then be stubborn and wait for a better label to come along. You know what I mean? So I wanted to get your guys' opinion on that. But anyway, Lufia 2, Rise of the Sun of Spinals, I got. Um, we're almost done, guys. We're almost done. I got a couple more games to show you, and then, uh, and, and then another game. Uh, <laughs> this first game, another shout-out. And this goes to the Dreamcastic channel. Dreamcastic channel? It's like fantastic, but Dreamcastic. Uh, big fan of the Dreamcast. This guy does a lot of reviews. His channel's great. Also, check him out. Link down below. Probably around here somewhere as well. Uh, check him out. The guy does reviews, uh, does all sorts of stuff. Uh, why is the only word that's coming to my mind right now? Reviews. I don't know, but this guy is great. Actually, he did in a pickup video a while back, I got Sledstorm for PlayStation, and because of this pickup video, he did a review of Sledstorm, where he played through it, and it was great! So look at that, it's just the community working together. In any case, he uh, saw that Layla, or girlfriend as we call her around here, uh, had a Dreamcast, or got a, got a Dreamcast, and uh, wanted to help out her collection. And so he sent us a couple games, the first being Sega Bass Fishing. Now, I love this. This is, oh man, this is so perfect because this has that silly uh, bass reel controller. And if I can get that, oh, you guarantee girlfriend's going to be playing some Sega Bass Fishing. And then the second one, this is great. It's Floygan Brothers. I think I'm saying that right. Floygan Brothers. Uh, episode 1. Now, he had contacted me and asked if I'd ever played this before. I believe it's a 3D platformer. I could be wrong. I haven't tried it out yet. It actually came in the mail today, and um, he wanted Girlfriend to give it a try, so maybe we'll see this on an upcoming episode of Girlfriend Versus as well. She does need to do 3D platformers, right? She's done 2D, needs to do 3D. Spoiling too much of what's going to come up in Girlfriend Versus Season 2. Whew! I only got one more thing to show you guys. The creme de la creme, right? That's actually a very special creme de la creme. And I'll tell you why in a moment, but first let's just show it. It is Air Zonk for the Turbo Graphics 16. Wow, complete in box. Now, Air Zonk, very 
hard to find game for the Turbo Graphics. And if you know anything about me, you'll know I don't even have a Turbo Graphics 16. So why did I get Air Zonk? Well, I'll tell you, Air Zonk isn't even for me. See, all these people always do so many great things for me, sending me these games and magazines and all this. Well, I like to give back to the community as well. And so this isn't even for my collection. It's actually for my good buddy Chris Roberts from the NARC podcast. Uh, he had been looking for this game. Uh, I knew that I might be able to get it for a decent price. And sure enough, here it is. And so I wanted to show that I don't just receive all this stuff and never give back. Uh, I, If I ever get a chance, of course I want to give it back to you guys. I want to help you out. I find all these games all the time. Um, I, I'm in a very uh, lucrative game finding area. Uh, I have several game stores to check out. So if you guys are ever looking for anything, hit me up. I'll try and hook you up. Um, and anyway, that's why I wanted to show this. Air Zonk for Chris, creme de la creme, goes right into his Turbo Graphics collection. And that's it guys, that's all I got this time. Woo, another big pickup video, I can't believe it. But, I don't have anything else to say. I didn't think of anything for the end. I never think of anything for the end. Um, oh, I did want to say, this is cool. I, I just re remembered, this retro video game magazine, this is awesome. Uh, I noticed, I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this, there's a Cartridge Brothers ad in there. Cartridge Brothers, I love the Cartridge Brothers. It's so cool to see their ad in a magazine. Um, anyway, just wanted to point that out. And on that happy note, that is where I'm gonna leave you. I'm so happy. I think I got this all in one take, as far as I know. I don't have to do another one, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna sit in this for a moment. Look at this, got my over the top shirt. Can you see that? Love that movie. Got my, my Dodgers hat, because it's baseball season. Now I'm going to hit the dusty trail. So until next time, boyfriend. <laughs>